Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility. Tonight we're talking about tango with Bert and Brigitte about how to dance your way through life. Thank you for listening. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Let's Talk Possibility, the show where we're talking about what's possible in the world. And tonight, we are focusing on tango. We want to really see what's possible, what we can we learn from tango that we can actually use in, in our relationships, in the work, and, and in our personal lives. So in the studio with me um, is Jack, my co-host. Hi, guys. Welcome <laughs> once again. Good to have you back. Yeah, and we've also got Tim, our producer, and our... Tango, passionate tango friends, um, Bert and Brigitte. Hello. Hi. So, how's it? Um, yeah, so Bert and Brigitte, just to give you a quick little background, are actually my tango teachers, for those who, who don't know. Um, Thank you for that, Corbus. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys specialize in what's called the Argentine tango. Mm. Um, for, for, for those who don't know too much about tango, um, there's ballroom tango, there's Argentine tango. And there's a very different dance. There's a very different, <laughs> big difference between the two. Um, although, as Bert earlier said, there's um, there's something to be learned from all dances. Um, but the reason we chose the tango is there's a there's a specific um, dynamic um, that that it portrays, mm. and that we think is really applicable to to what we want to discuss tonight. Plus, they kind of specialize in, 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 in what we're going to be discussing in terms of relationships and human dynamics. So, yeah. Yeah, because I started dancing in the Argentine tank, I think we were just saying, almost two years ago. I don't know, I think you started, I don't know when you started, but it's also been I quite remember a while. I remember, Corbus, wasn't that at the church in Melville? It was. Isn't that when yes. we started? Yeah, when April we had this uh, pink church. Was it was April. April 2009. So it's been, it's been quite a while. No, it wasn't April. It was October, well, or November. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He walked in with Dean and Mike, Leroy. Mike and Leroy. That's right. And we had Lucinda. So mm. our path for tango has been been a long road. I think it's been it's been a while, and I think we've got over the the years to really get to understand that that there's so much to this dance. Yeah. And really, what I think fascinates me about it is it's it's such a a dynamic between the the person who's leading, which is usually the men, and, and the person who's following the the woman, and when that that flow happens, it's talking when, when they get the the leading and following just right, the the most beautiful moments happen on the mm. dance floor. Mm. Not only I think for the the two people dancing, because it, it's just such a wonderful experience, but for those that are watching yeah. as well. So there's something that happens in in that interplay between the the leading and the following. That, that we wanted to talk about tonight because we can learn a lot from that in yeah. also the dynamics that happen in a relationship between a man and a woman in an in intimate relationship as well as, as we're saying, in the boardroom yeah. between yeah. employee and employers, between the leader and his team, between those, those dynamics. Mm. I think, um, I think you know, Burton, you can probably expand on this a little bit. The, well, both of you. Um, when we dance, the if you know the the dynamic between the two of of the, the the people involved in the dance, there needs to be clarity. There needs to be um, an openness. There needs to be a trust. There needs to be a lot a lot of that going on um, in order for for it to actually work. Mm. And that's why I think it's so applicable to to the relationship. Yeah. Well, okay. From that point of view, just very quickly, um, an employer always asks for an, em uh, an employee to sign a contract because what a leader needs from a follower is commitment. So from the first, before anything happens, mm. uh, as a leader, I need a commitment from my follower. And mm. in dance, on the dance floor, the way we see that is the man asks the woman to dance and she says yes or no. If she says yes, then she's willing to commit to dancing for three minutes with him. Mm. And I think it's the same in, in anything. A leader can't do anything with a follower if she's not committed. So straight away, <coughs> from the, mm. before we've even taken the first step, 
there's already a dynamic that comes into play with leaders and followers. Mm. A leader can't work with a follower who's not committed. Yeah. Mm. Okay. That's why employers make you sign a contract when, yeah. when you become an employee. Yeah. So basically, also then the, well, basically then saying that th there's commitment from both sides because the dance can't happen without the follower being committed to the leader. To the leader. And the and leader the leader's committed to the dance. To, to the dance. Mm. Well, you see, that, that's the interesting thing. When we do the Tango of Relationships workshop, the, the thing that we, we try to point out right in the beginning is that um, you have a relationship with everything in life. It's not just your, your family. It's not just your employees. It's you have a relationship with your car. And it doesn't want to start in the morning. You kick the bloody thing and you tell it to <laughs> get, a, get a life, you know. Yeah. So you have a relationship with everything. And the first thing that we like to point out is that, okay, you're having a relationship with everything, but there's, a, there's different kinds of relationships. If you have two leaders, mm -hmm. okay, it becomes very competitive and it becomes a fight because they're both trying to assert their leadership and get the other one to follow. Yeah. Okay, and that creates competition. It creates a fight. If you have two followers, everybody's sitting around waiting for someone else to take the initiative. It's like mm. the vultures in the Jungle Book sitting there. What are you going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? Yeah. I don't know. What are you going to do? You know that sort of thing. Yeah. So um, when you have two followers, nothing happens. When you have two leaders, mm. you end up with a fight. So the only way to make it a dance is to have a leader and a follower. The one's leading, one's following, mm. and then it becomes a dance. It's it's kind of like the only recipe that really works. Um, so in the t and in the tango, the one who leads is the, the one that is physically stronger, mm -hmm. not uh, from the intellect or from any other <coughs> aspect, mm. physically stronger and can um, sort of work with the lady and put her into steps and mm. get her mm. around the dance floor. <coughs> if you turn it around, a lot of ladies on the, on the classes, as you know, Kobus, say, yeah. <coughs> oh, I can lead as well. So then what we do <coughs> very clearly on the workshop is we turn it around. We say, yeah. okay, lady, here's your man. Mm. And then she pushes and pushes. And then after two minutes, she says, no, 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 I'm going back to being a follower. <laughs> so that is the first thing we actually showcase, that yeah. um, in the dance, the physically stronger, the man is the one who wants the woman, takes the woman on yeah. a journey um, and is then automatically the leader. Throughout the dance, the more they get experience, we can have active following where the woman goes back to leading or taking over the lead mm. if she is confident with her steps and whatever she does. So it's a corporation. It kind of brings me to, to the question, all this, the man, woman, the leading, mm. the following, that kind of stuff. Can you give us a, a brief little history of tango and how it actually evolved? Okay. Uh, well, the, the tango was uh, around long before it came to Buenos Aires. It was a form of music, and the people, the high society in Europe, particularly in France, enjoyed the tango music, and so they started dancing to it. And that developed into what is known as the international tango today, the ballroom tango. But what happened was, at the turn of <laughs> about 150 years ago, around about then, um, just before the First World War and the, S and the Second World War, there was a lot of immigrants uh, coming from Europe to escape the wars to the South America, the Promised Land. And uh, mostly the people in, in Europe were Catholics, so they were allowing their sons to go, but not their daughters to go. <laughs> and <laughs> it, 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 it happened that in Buenos Aires, uh, there was a time when the men out women, uh, outnumbered the women 70 to 1. Wow. And in those days, yeah, <laughs> nice <laughs> for the women. <laughs> uh, you got 70 potential morning. dates on a Saturday night. <laughs> Damn, long place, long time. <laughs> anyway, yeah, there was, no, there was no radio and TV in those days. And so for entertainment, the people, the musicians would play music and the people would sing. And the music that became particularly popular in Buenos Aires was tango music because mm. they were all longing for home and it was very melancholy. So it became a very popular form of music and the people started dancing to it. And so they, in a way, invented a new kind of tango, which was very organic because there were no dance teachers, professional dance, te dance teachers teaching them how to do it. So they just had to make it up as they went along. And... Um, Eventually it became so popular that uh, dance halls opened up where people could come and dance and orchestras uh, were formed that were playing this music and then people started to, to teach it. But it, it grew very organically, basically in what we would call the... They weren't really squatter camps, they were more like hostels uh, where the immigrants were held in uh, quarantine when they came from Europe. Some of them had to spend months in quarantine 
And uh, if they couldn't find work and place to live, they had just stay in the hostels where they were quarantined. Yeah. And they called them Comentichos. And the people, yeah, they started dancing tango there. And because there were so many different immigrants from Europe and nobody could, you know, not everybody was speaking the same language, um, there was no real good communication. So you'd just nod at a woman, she'd nod and you'd get together and you'd dance and that's how you'd communicate and, and get to know each other through dance and through music because you couldn't really talk to each other. Um, but the thing to understand is 70 men to one woman, the men danced with each other. And so if you have a look at the tango, it's a very macho dance, particularly the Argentine tango. The man is very macho, always looks like he's serious. Uh, and the reason that is is because they didn't want the other men to get the wrong feeling, <laughs> so uh, wrong impression. So yeah. two men dancing together, they looked as much as they could. And that became known as a stumpus, the way the tango man holds himself to let everybody know I'm a man, I'm a man and I'm definitely a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and the dress sense of tango, I, know, I don't know if it started then or when it started, but it's very... Very it's very really flashy, flashy, it's very... And yeah. Well, you know, I, I, did, I, I did once a survey in Buenos Aires um, and asked the men how would they choose their ladies to dance. And you know what? Half of the men said they look at the feet and the shoes. Oh, really? Mm. And I think this is where they also got one shoe shop after the other. Yeah. All kinds of shoes, sizes, colors... Oh, there's beautiful, some beautiful shoes. Uh, Any ladies yeah. listening? Some gorgeous so, things. And <laughs> and you know, we feel like princesses on the dance floor. That a shoe is part of being a princess. So you want to yeah? look like a princess? You Absolutely. Want to feel like a princess. We want you to um, take us on a journey, three and a half minutes, however long the track is, and we have the uh, the shoes for it. So um, that's yeah. where it comes from. <laughs> but if you if you want to talk about why uh, everybody's dressed so smartly, the 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 thing to understand is remember there were seventy men to one woman, okay. So the men mostly danced with each other, okay, and the women had the pick of the men. So the men, if they looked neat and smart and they looked respectable, okay, there were more chances of them getting a dance mm -hmm. with a woman. Yeah. So that encouraged men to dress well, do their hair, look good, smell good, so that. It improved their chances with women because you know if a woman wants to dance with you and, and you're one of 70 and you've got bad breath and your hair looks bad she's not going to dance with you so that's where it came from mm -hmm. and then what happened was as uh, the dance progressed and the hot dance halls grew up um, the women realized they could charge the men for a dance okay <laughs> because there's so many men wanting to dance with them so they started to char charge them and what they realized was if they were more sensual okay and better to look at and better to dance with and that sort of thing, they could charge the men more and the men would pay. Mm. So, so, so what can you take from that then into the modern day relationship now? Understanding that those dynamics, that if that's where the Argentine... You, oh, you know what, it is still a very smart affair. It's something that you, you know, you go out here in Johannesburg on a Sunday night, you dress nicely, you put your shoes on, you know, you, you, you feel good. And this is also, tango is about feeling good. Not only feeling good within yourself, which is a huge part of the tango. Mm. You need to know yourself a lot in order to dance it well, but also feel good. So it's the whole package that comes together. Mm. So I think that's one of your points, sorry, it's, it's self-awareness. Yes. Yes, yes. Well, it is self-awareness. First you become aware of yourself and what you can and can't do and how you want to express yourself in this dance. But the other thing is uh, it makes you aware of the other. Your, your partner, and not only your partner, but everybody else in a dance hall, for example, which is like life. You can't just pay attention to your spouse. You've also got to pay attention to your family and your friends and everybody else. Um, but I think um, the, the whole thing, the, 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 the point about that is that the men were aware of what the women wanted. And I think that's important in a relationship. Mm. You have to, you know, when you... When you're in a relationship, when you love somebody, you really want to enjoy them. And to enjoy them, you want to get to know them better. You want to understand what makes them tick. Mm. Okay? And when you understand what makes them tick, you're going to do those sorts of things because you want them to enjoy you and you want to enjoy them. And I think that's what it comes down to. You know, men realized if they dress smart and smell good and their hair's done and, you know, and they behave themselves with good manners, that's what women want. And they'll get more dancers. Mm -hmm. And so it is part of that if you want to be a social being living with other people you've got to understand that yeah it's about give and take mm -hmm. and that's what that's what it's about awareness mm -hmm. of the other mm -hmm. and what the other wants well that's that, that not it doesn't just apply to the tie and the shirt um, 
there's also another aspect to the relationship that comes from the inside. So mm. Mm. being well, well, that, that, that's where well, the, you know, knowing you the well. other person, knowing the value system. You know, we all live with values. What is your value system and what is mine? Yeah, so, so and how can we link it together? Yeah. It's not about the tie and the shirt and the lipstick. So um, well, we were we were talking about it the other day, um, kind of talking about the show, and um, where you, know, you were specifically saying you dance with with one guy, or one guy comes to dance with you. And then you dance with somebody else, and you would know this. And yeah, it's totally a completely different, different experiences. Dance. Mm. Um, and I think in my in my in my little bit of experience as well, you. I think I think touching back on the self awareness and being aware of your partner, like you're saying, and knowing what they what 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 makes them tick and what they want and and uh, what makes them enjoy uh, interaction, mm. is knowing how they work and how they. Uh, how they are and in dancing if you can understand how your lady um, will do the things you want her to do on the dance floor you really got to understand her yes. but but for that to happen you need to have a clear concept mm. a clear vision um, as a leader you know you if you if you don't know where you're going and what you're doing how big your steps are mm. you will never be able to lead this into a comfortable dance yeah so the best leaders on the dance floor and in life are those who know what they want. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. they are in life, what are their weaknesses, what are the strengths. Mm -hmm. So And where they want to go. So absolutely. Dance, know. I always keep telling t the men, you know, you, you gotta if you wanna go, you have to go. You have to step yeah. with confidence. Mm. Because if you don't step with confidence, your follower is never going to step mm. with confidence. Exactly. They will always be that insecurity around mm. it. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, the biggest part, and that was my personal story, is to be uh, aware of, of myself. Mm. How confident I am with my body, with the way I look, the way I feel, the way I do things. Mm -hmm. And, and then it must the also be thing. then for the, the follower to have an understanding of the leader. Mm. So I just want to mention our book for tonight. Everyone can see that there's um, Intimate Communion. That are by David Dider. David Dider. Um, it's a very interesting book about, uh, specifically about um, romantic relationships, or although he would not want me to say romantic, because yeah. <laughs> intimate communion is very he, different to, uh, has to he romantic. Has the tango? Does it come <laughs> out? <of it>? No. <laughs> no. No. It's a good but question. Yet, no, but yet. It's, uh, that's why, <laughs> why I chose this book, and I suggested, Jack, we, we talk about it, is yeah. he talks about the masculine essence versus the feminine essence. Mm. That we all have the, our yin and yang. Uh, and the masculine is the leading, the the taking the knowing the direction, being confident, taking that step, and the the feminine is the receiving. Mm -hmm. It's the following. It's the flow. It's the um, go, going with. But you've got a lot of uh, uh, female CEOs nowadays. So it's but yeah. but then they're in their masculine. That's yes. right. Then they've they've stepped into the masculine. So so the reason why we brought up this book was just. It's a really good way of um, David Ida explains nicely the masculine and femin feminine essences. Yeah. And for me, it translated so well to in, in the tango. Yeah, I think it's important people just understand that you know, masculine and feminine essence doesn't mean man or woman. No. Mm. Um, it, ma it means an energy and a, a way of being. Right, right. And both man and woman have those essences at different times to, mm. to mm. do different things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's why. That's why we're in a, in a tango of relationships, we do like um, the couple to to swap, mm -hmm. because uh, both can lead and both can follow. Okay. It's just because the man is physically bigger and heavier, and the woman is normally smaller and lighter. It's just easier for him to lead her and get her to do things than the other way around. And so also it's a biological thing. We, we have a preference though for our masculine or feminine essences. Yes, as mentioned. So so most men are more. Mm. more comfortable in their masculine essence, whereas most women are more comfortable in their feminine. They have the flexibility, so when they're in the boardroom, the woman can step into a masculine to, to run the meeting and, and do what he's done, but then it's mm. about going home and, and, yeah. and stepping back into to the feminine. So it's, it's anyone wants to know more about that part, I think it's a very nice framework to understand mm. the person that you're dancing kind of with. So you're saying you need to understand what the woman wants and the woman needs to understand what the, what the man wants. Mm -hmm. You know, the leader needs to know what the followers need and the followers mm -hmm. need to know what the leader, you know, the direction that. The intimate communion is a, is a very nice framework for that. Mm, definitely, definitely. Um, just, just latching on that leadership 
concept again. What would you guys define leadership to be? Well, you know, I think one of the things that I, I like to stress when we start our, our relationship workshop is that the word lead or to lead means to go first. It's not about dominance. It's not about control. It's not about anything like that. It's about going first. So if we understand in, in a tango or in any dance or anything in life, uh, if I start the dance, I'm going to initiate the step. In other words, I'm going to lead. I'm going to take the first step, mm -hmm. which initiates the dance, and the woman is going to follow that. So to lead, yes, it's, it's not about dominance. It's not about control. It's about almost guiding. And if you think the reason, you know, the reason that the leaders are supposed to be confident, strong individuals is because they've done it already. They've been there, okay, and now they're going to get the followers to come with them to do it. Or maybe they need followers to help them get to achieve to what the they want to. Yes. Yeah, so, so for me, the quality of a leader is just to understand that you are, in a way, guiding those who have never been there before, so to speak. You understand? Mm -hmm. And that there's no dominance or control or anything. You're just the guide. So, yeah. And lead by example. Yes, you know? lead, lead by, by example. example. Listen to your follower and know your own steps. Know where mm -hmm. you are mm -hmm. and um, communicate. Yeah. And so it's, uh, because in the tango, we don't talk too much. We let the steps talk. Mm -hmm. We also let the body language talk. You can immediately see, of course, you know that. Mm. We always say to the man or to any dancer, you know, proud posture. A lot of people come and they have their shoulders down. All the weight from the past, everything that's buggering them mm. is actually draining them down. Mm. So the first thing we do in the tango is to get them up, you know, proud. Mm. Yeah. Be proud. Be Mm. Be yeah. yourself, and that is the that is the hardest part because they fall back mm. down to the shoulders. Yeah. And, okay, so, and so so in the tango, and as well as in leadership, we're talking about the the first thing is being a self aware, yes. so knowing what you're doing, is yes. also being aware of others, and yes. saying we have relationships with everything. So it's not just to the person you're dancing with, but to being aware of everyone else on the dance floor as well. Mm. Um, there's obviously the, the How passion, do you and the communication yeah. yes. that you communicate through through. Mm. Or communication is a key part, being able mm. to get the leader getting their intention across yes. to the follower and the follower then following. Being able to follow it, yes. Following that. So how do you want to conduct this? Is a is a you know, how do you if you fill up your your car with petrol, how do you want to talk to the guy that helps you? Do you want to be rude to him? Do you want to be nice to him? Do you want to give him a tip? Yeah. Do you want to thank him? Yeah. And it's the same in tango. Uh, how do you want to conduct that with uh, acceptance, respect? And all these little things that make life easier, or do you want to do it? Let's do it just my way. I mean, we we know both sides, exactly. and that is our job then to say, look, if you keep being nasty and stand on her feet, she's not going to dance <laughs> with you. <laughs> so, that's true. Um, mm. yeah, that's where we start mm. the whole thing. Well, I think then then now we're beginning to touch on part of the responsibilities of the follower. You know, often um, our leaders dominate our. our our followers and uh, they turn our followers into doormats and and in the tango the, the woman doesn't allow that to happen she never allows the man to bully her into anything mm. because and so what we what we say she must provide resistance in other words she resisted resists bad lead and in a way if the, the the follower is a good follower and resists bad lead she helps the leader become a good leader mm. Mm. and so if we have a, a look at it um, in, you know in, in in any country we we have followers who elect our leaders and if our followers don't like good, the the leadership and they decide it's bad leadership they have the ability to get rid of the leaders or change the leadership so that it's good leadership. And I think that is one of the most important roles of the follower in the tango. You know, and, and it's happened to us in a dance. We when we were dancing in the in the, the, the world championships, I was as nervous as hell. I had a <laughs> blank. Okay, and I was doing crazy stuff. I even led Brigitte into a, a move that we're not allowed to do. And she resisted it. And she didn't take that move. And yeah, clever me. You know. and she she <laughs> rescued <laughs> our dance. You think? understand? Yes, but but that's that's the important thing. You know, the 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 follower is not a doormat. Yeah. is not to be dominated, and and is you know they commit out of their own free will and because of their own confidence, and then they follow with resistance because if the leadership is bad, it should be resisted. 
But what we also realize in the tango, I mean, you know, we've got the man and we've got a woman, a leader and a follower. Most followers, they don't even know that they follow. They're taking over the lead <laughs> after the first step, <laughs> you know, and then she corrects, you know, and yeah. then do this to the left. You got to go to the right. You hold me right there. <coughs> so the man gets really... Um, yeah. intimidated uh, heavily by a lot of women, they take over the lead yeah. and they actually should follow. So that is another big job yeah. that we've so got it sounds on the like class. Then, so sorry, it sounds like then we, when you're actually following, there's a way of resisting, which you say, which is yes. not leading. Yes. Yes. So it's, it's not changing yes. roles, it's, it's resisting. I think and it's understanding sort of the, the responsibility of what it actually means mm. to be a follower and yes. what it actually means yes. to be a leader. Yeah. Um, like sorry. we said earlier, uh, <laughs> there are so many leadership courses out there. You know, if you open up the paper, leadership, 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 how mm. to make a good leader, no one do you see a Teach course how to be a, how how to be a good how follower. How to be a good follower. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. they just it's say the missing. follower can teach the leader so much. Mm -hmm. So just we got a lovely little clip um, right. from a, um, a documentary about tango. And there's just a little clip around surrendering it. And it's interesting, the, the one quote that Lady mentions in, in this video is that following is passive in a sense, in that it's like listening. But there is active listening and then passive listening. Absolutely. And I think that, that for me was just mm -hmm. summed it up as, as the... The you follower. know, this, is the, clever, me, but this is the clever lady, you know. <laughs> <laughs> very, very clever, you know. So this is the princess that uh, knows what... So maybe you can just play the first two minutes. I, I don't know if oh, you can see the bit. stream. But that, to me, is the, the most... These, this, these couple, when they dance, it's the most beautiful just few seconds of, of the dance. But yeah, there was a talk in the, in the movie about um, connection. That you have to be connected to your partner, but in order to connect to your partner, you actually have to connect to yourself first. Mm. Absolutely. Which is that, that's, I think it all starts with, if you're not aware of what you want yes. and where you are, yes. Yes. how can you connect to someone else you and, can't. and, you can't. and you can't. show them exactly. that you're on. So yeah, if you want to get a, just a good sense of tango and, and being a follower, that's a, a great Go clip have a look at that. to... Mm. Do you guys want to give us a, a brief, uh, just a quick brief... Um, Little little um, summary of what you guys what you guys do because I know you guys do a, a, a relationship workshop out there. Do you want? How do you, you do? You actually teach the dance while you do this workshop, or how yes. does yes. it work? Yes. Yes. It, it's it's a good way to learn uh, the the roles of a leader and a follower. When you know we stand up there, you lecture, you hear it, and it's all intellectual. Yeah. And then we take you onto the dance floor where you experience it very really on the dance floor. And so it's not just an intellectual thing. You, it's a very visceral, mm. very real thing. I okay. think the and first part is, Bert, that uh, what comes out for any uh, couple that has been new on the dance floor, the first part is uh, increased self-awareness. Yeah. Absolutely. All of a sudden they go back and say, oops, is that me? Is this how I do yeah. it? Mm. You know. This seems to be a bit of a, I think this is a, key, a big key part because that's come up through the whole mm. of tonight mm. yeah. is self-awareness mm. and it all starts with self-awareness yes mm. very much yeah. so well yeah I, I think it starts with self-awareness and once you're getting that right and you're enjoying that you then turn that awareness onto others mm. and that will become your dance partner or the music or the dance hall or in life your employer or your mm. employee so yes if you can develop a good s sense of self-awareness you can then turn that on others and develop an that same awareness of them Okay. You know, well, I went and at the beginning, you know, <laughs> they, they step in on each other's feet a lot, at, and at the yes. end of the lesson, there is no no such thing anymore. So, because oh. uh, then, yeah, they've learned a way yes. to communicate and and yes. that flow. Yes, and that I think is um, just in summing up for tonight. I think is one of the the beauties of learning to to dance the the tango. Is for me, it gives you the the actual I call it the neuromuscular kind of the physiology and. Uh, I want to say an experience of that flow of leading and following. Mm -hmm. And it's great, I think, when you have that experience to then be able to translate that into your personal relationships and into your relationships at work. At work as well. So I want to thank you so much for, for coming through and, and sharing yeah, about, yeah. about oh, your passion Absolutely. and knowledge around tango. Yeah. And Absolutely. I just love how, how it's very much followers need to, to learn how yeah. to actually teach the, the leaders yeah. when, you they, wanna, when they're stepping If you off. guys want to find out more about what they do, um, go to www.tango-tensity.co.za. Um, and, yeah. Yeah, and you'll get all the information about the workshops if you want to actually learn how to do the tango and work on... 
and on your us. relationships you can meet us. and meet you them. Can meet us. <laughs> meet us. Mm. So yeah, guys, thank you very much. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Yep, um, Monday the third, and we have a mentalist do 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 in the studio <laughs> with us then. Nice. Um, we'd love to he- for you to keep the conversation going with us about tango and relationships. So. Talk to us on Twitter, LTP possi- uh, LT Possibility. <laughs> <laughs> or find us on Facebook. Let's talk yeah. possibility. All right. so Thank you for having us. Thank yeah. you. It Thank was you nice guys. meeting you. Yeah, Anna. and we'll see you guys Jack. on the dance floor. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, on the dance floor. Thank awesome. you, guys.